New highs and Stewart just mentioned for the down the S&P again today. J.P. Morgan, they beat the estimates this morning. And a surprise non-move by the Bank of England also boosting markets. So forget about all the doom and gloom. Dave Manning uh, on what could be a summer boom. Dave, we certainly come out the gate pretty strong for the summer rally. Uh, came out the gate really strong. I guess, you know, Charles, it's it just kind of this ongoing story that there's no place else to get yield. And so everybody keeps turning to equity markets and, and there's no place to have the kind of the solidity of uh, or safety of equity markets that the U.S. has. And so we keep being the market of choice and, and it, it spirals ever higher. Yeah, but here's the thing I find interesting. Uh, you know, we saw a lot being made of institutional money coming out of the market, tons and tons of individual investor money coming out of the market. I don't I don't see irrational exuberance here. I don't see crazy, frothy valuations. We're being led by utility stocks. I mean, you know, I think the narrative that somehow this is just unfortunate and that Goldman Sachs should be $60 instead of $160 it, it's why a lot of investors have missed this rally. It doesn't feel like an irrational exuberance market to me. It feels like we're a safe haven. We're steering the, the, the ship of, of our economy as well as it appears to be able to be steered. And I think, and, and again, you, we do have this eight year ongoing thing of there is no place to, to get yield the, the, you know, other than the equity markets. And, and so money keeps coming at it. And every time you think it's about to die out, you know, there, there's a new reason to be here. In the meantime, last night, Smuckers raised their uh, dividend. You know, I'm telling people all the time, you know, don't, for, don't, don't worry about the next high tech gadget. Peanut butter and jelly has been doing pretty good in this market. So, <laughs> I, you know, listen, you're getting the yield you talked about, but also I think it underscores the fact that you can't replace peanut butter and jelly with the internet. You can't replace Arm & Hammer baking soda with the internet. So, you you know, again, I, I get the idea that, you know, somehow this is by default, but I also think we underestimate how great American companies are. The power of technology is that it keeps getting better and better and better and more efficient to do business. So if you've got a big established market like peanut butter and jelly or your bacon bread or you're distributing organic milk or something, I mean, you, you, you arguably your business can get more efficient. Now, there's some question, you know, lurking around the corner about what the next quarter of corporate profits look like. But, you know, Charles, you and I both know that's that always that's always there. And, and so, sometimes, you know, yeah. And sometimes the irony is when we're expecting bad numbers, uh, you know, it's like if we kicked off earnings seasons with a good number from Alcoa, even though the numbers were down year over year, expectations game also plays a role in this. Let me ask you about the curious action in this market vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Bank of England not cutting rates. First of all, I'm going to tell you, I think it's been despicable. Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, uh, set aside three emergency programs going into the Brexit vote, uh, raising hysteria about doom and gloom. Afterward, they, they telegraphed or signaled they would cut rates again because of impending doom, and they didn't. I mean, I thought that was despicable, but how about the idea the market's still going up? I thought about this a lot, you know, before coming to talk to you today about it. And it seems to me that the, the nature of uncertainty is that that humans, when, when it's a when it's a big surprise, they've got nothing to wrap their arms around and no way to process it. And so this Brexit thing, which did catch the kind of the the the, the, the elite class by hugely by surprise they just didn't know how to process it and so folks like Carney who's a you know a Canadian running the Bank of England had a very difficult time I think knowing what to do or even how to think about what to do because I don't know that he ever really expected he'd be in the position he is today so finding that he gets farther down the road watches the world not fall apart Right. Watches right. U.S. markets elevating and then says, you know what, maybe I won't cut rates right now. I, I, you know, it's human nature. It's not shocker. And I'm not sure, frankly, it's despicable. All right. All right. Well, I tell you what, some, a lot of people lost a lot of money. Uh, the two two day sell off was the largest uh, decline money, money wise in the history of markets. So I think there's some people who probably wish they were holding on to those stocks. And I think they bear a small response. Maybe I was a little hyperbolic there. Hey, Dave, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. <laughs>